am back. I am back. Things are happening. I am back. You may return from your corner, corner Dronny. I give you permission. Curious, Hypernor thought. He considered the possibility that there was something behind that answer. Hmm. Why? Why are you here? Why are you here? Why are you here then? Hyperinor studied the man as he answered. The subject of this is very not clear. Um, my name is Darius, son of Dolius. There's a siren hiding in the mountains near my homeland. I need her dealt with before the new moon. Oh yeah, Johnny. Um, after the stream, I can take a look at it with you. No problem. I also need to work on my website. I feel like... I feel like this is an info dump. And I don't like it. A siren? That made Hyperinor even more curious. Perhaps the sirens raid the merchant's trade routes, hence the worn clothing. Sirens are quite deadly, therefore also expensive. Hyperinor mused. I'm going to take out the also. I'm willing to pay you 22 drachma. Hyperinor's mouth tightened. Who did this merchant think he was? 70 drachma. Darius's eyes popped out of his head. That's ludicrous. Hyperinor shrugged. Should be more. It takes a monster to kill a monster. Darius saw it through fairly quickly. Fine. 70 drachma. Um, make this section clearer. I feel like most of this conversation should be punched up. I feel like it's missing a certain like it's missing that edginess that I had in the the action sequence. Um, missing that here. Hyperinor considered the merchant. Darius definitely wanted this iron taken care of. I don't like this at all.
Good. Have my payment ready in one fortnight. I will bring you your head. My parent or turn to leave. Darius called after him. I'll need some of its feathers as well. I have to send some proof to my backers. Paranor paused. He looked back at Darius. Another 15 drachma for trophies. Darius didn't hesitate this time. Done. I need those feathers. Um, I don't think... The dialogue really shows character here. I'm not feeling like you can tell who the characters are just by what they say. Paranor smiled wistfully. Don't worry about me. Give me my money and you'll get your head. Well, this makes zero sense. I feel like I make, yeah, so this is exactly my problem. There, I spent almost two pages, uh, like two pages, building up to the meeting. And then the meeting itself is like two pages. Like, yeah, basically two pages. And That dis that's a disparity. Like, I don't feel like I've given nearly enough detail in what's happening during the conversation. How, how they interact with each other, what's going on, how they're presenting themselves. I just basically have dialogue down. Um, and that's exactly what I was saying, what the conversation should be punched up. Like, I, I feel like I'm, I need to spend more time in this section, like expand it out, give it flavor. Um, this is definitely missing some stuff.
Baron awoke and didn't know where he was. He remembered some sort of fight. A beautiful tune that he couldn't quite put his finger on. Hyperion felt a sharp pain in his head. There was a smile as well, somewhere in the muddle of memories. He sat up and looked around. Night had fallen while he slept, and a flickering fire sent disturbing shadows all over the courtyard. Good. You're awake. Surprised by the voice, Hyperion scrambled to his feet. Hmm. So the one thing I'm noticing a little bit about the way that I've written this is that I've used, I use a lot of the same expressions. Or I feel like I'm using a lot of the same expressions. His sword was propped up on the bench beside him, and he grabbed it, drawing the blade in one smooth motion. Siren looked up from the flames at him, her eyes glowing in the firelight. Memories flooded back to him. I was trying to kill you? He couldn't understand why he'd wanted to do that. Why had he wanted to kill her? Cyrus' gaze returned to the fire. You were. The pain in Hyperonor's head returned. What did you do to me? didn't do anything to you, she said, a hint of a smile on her lips. Another memory flashed to the forefront, the siren song, he remembered. It's mournfully sweet tune that drags sailors to their deaths. Maybe that should be a comma. What is your name, warrior? I am Pe Pesinoi. Yeah, now it's a she. Dude, were you not listening when I was talking about that, Droni? Where I wanted to change it, like I wanted to have it change halfway through the story from it's to she, like after he wakes up from the siren song. Like I wanted to make it sort of like this is where he thought of her as a monster. This is where he thought of her as not a monster sort of thing. Or a different, in a different way anyway. Her paranor. The word escaped his lips before he could object. Hadn't they just been fighting? Why was he helping her? Ugh. Please come sit with me. I really got to work on uh, my dialogue, not just what the dialogue is saying, but how the dialogue's informing the story. I feel like it's, it's just kind of sitting there and when it sits there, there's nothing going on around it and it's missing something, you know?
purposes. Hyperinor, Hyperinor sat down across from her. He could barely feel the heat of the flames. He noticed that she had a bandage around, wrapped around her left wing. That wound is my fault, isn't it? Hyperinor asked. It's not your fault. You didn't know what you were doing. I did. I had a contract to kill you. Did they ask for anything specific? Your head and some feathers. There should be a question. This is to uh, script ask. Describe things in between. I was afraid of that. There was a moment of silence between them. Hisinui looked like she was struggling with something. I paired in her thought that maybe she was considering her next step. Why would he think that? Exactly, Drani. Exactly. I need your help. Pesinoia said. With what? Hyperinor was curious now. Damn, he's always curious. Why so curious? In fact, the entire situation from the get-go had sparked his imagination. There was something big going on here, and he didn't yet have all the pieces of the puzzle. There's some good ideas here. But they need better logic. If you found me, then that means they're much closer to Zodnik than I first thought. I need to keep him safe. Who's Zodnik, and why does he need saving? I Hyperinor asked. Zodnik is my friend, a fawn from the Winter Valley. He's in a great deal of danger. They're getting bolder. Uh, this probably should be since. The lack of answers were starting to get to Hyperinor. Who are? What's going on, he asked, showing a small chink in his armor. People who hired you, of course. Yeah, I mean, this transition seems really weird. And there's definitely a missing section. I need to figure out how their conversation moves from the employer to the backstory. Persephone was our mistress. She loved us like sisters and we her. We spent our days in Demeter's garden, 
away from the brutality of man. Sounds nice. Hyperinor was a little jealous. He'd never been away from the brutality of man, as she put it. Ysinoe looked at him wistfully. It didn't last long. Hyperinor could feel her pain. He wondered if her voice affected her stories as well as her singing. One morning, when we woke, Persephone was gone. Ysinoe... Pesinoe's voice. Yeah. Too many P names. Her voice broke a little. She lost herself in the memory. We looked everywhere, but we couldn't find her. Demeter came for us. She was angry, and we were desperate. She turned to us into this out of rage. Basinoe gestured to herself. Uh, this action isn't very clear. And uh, what were they before? Sirens. We were charged to search further and further, but we never found Persephone. Demeter was furious. In her infinite wisdom, she clipped our wings and trapped us at sea. But you found your way back eventually. Rhyming. We did, many, many years later. My sisters had grown to love the sea and its roaring temperament. But when we allowed a ship to pass through our waters without a sacrifice, the gods punished us again by forcing us back onto land. Many of my sisters didn't survive the transition. We had spent too long in these forms to learn. And that's not exactly what I wanted to say there. Um, there was a section later on. Here we are. No, no, it wasn't. It wasn't this. I want to talk about the longing here, longing for the sea, longing for their mistress. Hyperno poked the fire. He got up and added another log, ignoring the tears flowing down Pesinoe's cheeks. Content with the sight of the flames, Hyperno asked, How did you lose your arm? Transition. Now that's a different story. Let's just say that when the sirens visited, visited Hades, not all of us came back unscathed. Yeah, um, that is an interesting point. Uh, there's no resolution to the Persephone myth here. I should put one in. It would make this transition with the things about Hades make a lot more sense. Persinoe held up her metal arm 
the alloy reflecting the light of the fire. I keep saying this stuff about the fire and I'm not sure if it's necessary. Who made you the replacement? Hyperonor asked, his curiosity once again getting the better of him. Zodnik did. Um, what's her reaction like? It clicked for Hyperonor right then. This demon, the one they're trying to summon the ritual. Yeah. Talk about the demon. That's one of the elements I'm missing here. He has something to do with your arm, doesn't he? That's why they want not just any siren, but you specifically. This phrase is very difficult. Well, it's not like there's many of us left to choose from. Pacin and we fell silent. My parent watched her out of the corner of his eye. Reactions here. She opened her mouth to speak and then closed it again, considering what she wanted to tell him. This is odd. I still don't understand. Why she's not open about this, about the arm. My parent had been staring into the fire for a while now. So, my parent wasn't sure to say. Perhaps it was better to say nothing at all. No, now was the time for business. What's our next step then? How do we stop them? You know what? I think this stuff here I think this stuff here Uh, all the stuff before the freeze, so right here, should be, should happen before. Should go before where that, that missing section is. I feel like it makes a lot more sense going there. What's our next step then? How do we stop them? We need to get Zodnik to a safe place before they can take him. It'll take at least uh, too many takes, repetition. Two days to get to the Ripper by foot, Hyperonar pointed out. Pacino we considered. I don't think that we have much that much time. Unless you can fly us there faster, Hyperonar asked. The siren looked toward her bandaged wing. Hyperonar felt a definite pang of guilt. Oh right. Pacey and we gently smiled at him. I would say it's not your fault, except it is your fault. Hyperion frowned. She was messing with him. I'm sorry. She smiled again. I know. They lapsed into an easier silence. How's your shoulder? Pacey and we asked. Repetition. Hyperion stretched his shoulder. The bones were knitting back together quickly. Dragon's blood came in handy sometimes. Very few, but some. 
Rapid healing was the one benefit Hyperion was actually thankful for. Fine. I heal pretty well, he replied. I can see that. By your look, you are a Spartoi. Hyperion was taken by surprise. In Thebes, the city they had helped Cadmus build, the Spartoi were legends. Around these parts, him and his brothers were not exactly well known. You've heard of us? Facing we nodded. I counted your brothers once, a long, long time ago. Was it as violent an encounter as this? Pesinui smiled. Not quite, though it did nearly come to blows more than once. Sounds like my family. And mine. When my sisters came back from the sea, many fr friends had become enemies. I know the feeling. It had been a long time since I paranoid had visited Thebes for good reason. Monsters understood monsters, he supposed. All right. So that's pretty much all the stuff up to where we got to today, like what we worked on earlier. This stuff is a little too fresh, so I'm not gonna do it the last two pages. Not to mention it's going to change very drastically with the reordering. But I think the reordering is a good thing. I think it'll change a lot of the issues I'm having with the structure. Um, but yeah, that's the second draft basically edited. Um, so next week, I'm going to be working on the third draft uh, and hopefully getting a section of that done. I think. We'll see. Um, I got to look at my schedule and the way that all works out. But uh, that's my plan for now anyway. Um, so yeah. I think that's going to be it for me. Uh, I've been going for about three hours. Uh, I usually end up around now anyway. Um, yeah. So without further ado, um, my name is Brendan, and this is Accidental Origin. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at uh, the address above, as well as check out my website for all of the VODs and other um, VODs and extra uh, links and resources per episode. Uh, so yeah, other than that, thanks all for hanging out with me. I'll see you all next week.